Hey guys, it's Sunday, June 28th. Just hanging out here in our rock garden. Figure I'd do this video in the morning before the intense heat of the day sets in. We've had really hot temperatures for the last couple weeks, plus 30 degrees Celsius, and absolutely no rain to speak of. Doesn't seem to have affected the plants. They're well established, so hopefully they're finding moisture deep down in the soil. So let's uncover everything and take a look, see how all the plants are doing. Cherry plants doing okay. Did have something attack them in the last uh, last couple weeks. Not sure what. Not sure what it was. Didn't see any specific insects on them, but still putting on lots of new growth. And the problem doesn't seem to have gotten any worse. So uh, yeah, hopefully whatever it was, it's now passed. Still have not many cherries, but a couple. Uh, so we'll see how how those turn out. This other plant is doing extremely well, but again, something did uh, something did get them for uh, for a brief period of time. Broccoli doing very well. Still don't see any any broccoli heads forming. There might be something down there, but. Uh, very large plants should be well it's always a good year for uh, for broccoli this uh, this is Imperial and uh, as long as you keep the bugs off it we keep it covered you'll get very very large uh, large heads of broccoli peppers doing well starting to uh, starting to put some height on again they were a little stunted from the extreme temperatures that we had both hot and cold when we first put them out uh, and recently this hot weather doesn't seem to this really hot weather doesn't seem to totally agree with them but they are doing uh, they're managing and we have quite a few peppers already set they're kind of hiding you got to look for them so there's a large one there another one set on this plant here that jalapeno is set there. Lots of flowers, so lots of peppers. Hopefully still to come. Again, you can see lots of flowers. So lots of fruit should be set shortly. And then a couple there. And any in these ones, hard to find. No, not yet. Tomatoes are growing. <laughs> we, um, the suckers kind of got away from us. <laughs> so uh, we are still trying to trim as best we can, but for a lot of them, we've just let them kind of grow. There is still quite a bit of time left, lots of time left in the season, so uh, we'll see what happens. We have tons of tomatoes and flowers set. Um, again, still haven't figured out what plant is, is which variety. On the other side, there is what looks to be... Yeah, these ones are look like the midnight snack because they have the purple uh, purple hue to them already uh, starting other than that these plants are enjoying the heat the asparagus is all done for the year we're again just let uh, let some of the uh, the shoots leaf out produce energy for the root system uh, for next year 
and romaine lettuces, celery, doing very well. Cucumbers seem to have bounced back. Well, some of them have bounced back since the, uh, the late frost that we had. We had a frost mid-June, which is, even for us, is quite, uh, quite extraordinary. Cucumbers are set, starting to train them up our trellis. You see the plants in the middle took a little bit more of a hit than uh, than the two on the end, but they'll make it. They're uh, putting on new growth, so should be uh, should be okay. The pickling cucumbers fared a lot better, and there are definitely some some pickling cucumbers starting again. They're starting to crawl along, so we'll train them train them up the trellis. Zucchini are in full production mode as they as they get once they get to a certain size they just start throwing out fruit like crazy. We actually did a time lapse of one of the flowers opening and closing throughout the day. So we can take a look at that. And our butternut squash starting to vine out. We move the weed guard back a little bit because butternuts will sink roots into the ground as they crawl along. So you do have to leave the ground open and allow them to do that. So we just move the weed guard back as the plants move forward. I'm not sure what I did differently this year as opposed to the last time I grew corn. Uh, but these seem to be doing extremely well. Uh, last time I grew corn, the plants made it to about half this size for the entire season. Uh, so this is a, a great improvement. Now these corn are pretty close together, so I'm giving them quite a bit of water and the occasional uh, blast of fertilizer. Just, uh, yeah, just because they're so, they're so close. The melons are actually doing quite well this year. Um, this is the largest these melon plants have been so early in the season. I can't remember if they're cantaloupe or uh, honeydew. The watermelon plants seem to have been uh, stunted by the frost, probably the frost. Uh, they just haven't uh, haven't gotten going yet. Again, not still quite a bit of time in the growing season, but not that much time. So I don't know if they're ever going to uh, to get rolling. But uh, the other melons, this one especially, we do have a chance of getting some uh, some pretty good sized fruit off it. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. And our pepper plants in the planters here. These ones we topped about four weeks ago. I don't know. I'm not sure if they're doing any better than just the ones that we that we left alone. Again, these ones we do have to water almost every day because of the heat um, and because they're in they're in the planters. The habanero. 
And again, it has some flowers on it, so we do have a chance of getting a super hot uh, pepper this year. So that uh, that'll be exciting if if it actually does happen. That plant is really sensitive to uh, to weather and to temperatures, so we shall see. Onions doing okay. Nothing really too exciting. The only thing that is exciting about this bed is the lack of weeds compared to, to the other bed. And again, I attribute it to the last two years this bed had weed guard on it uh, because we were growing uh, broccoli and Brussels sprouts. So we definitely have to rotate our weed guard. We'll definitely keep the weeds down. First sowing of lettuce, we've been taking, oh, probably about a head of lettuce every every two days. Still have quite a good supply. On the other side, the strawberry bed is in full production. You can see lots of strawberries. These plants are on their second year. So next year will be their, the last year for these plants. You can see quite a few berries. And these plants are on their first year. So these are all runners from uh, that were transplanted from the other bed. So next year that first bed of plants will come out and we will collect runners from this bed to start the next patch. But everything doing quite well. You we have to come through again. An ongoing job. Snip out. Snip out the runners. But lots of strawberries this year. Blueberries starting to swell. And again, plants are doing well now that the deers have stopped uh, have stopped nipping the uh, the new growth, but lots of blueberries. Cauliflower does seem to be starting to uh, to hard up a little bit. I'm not sure. Yeah, so we should be should be producing cauliflower this year, which uh, actually will be a first out of this garden. They're looking really, really good. Kale and Swiss char, we've been taking this pretty much every two or three days we come and snip through uh, some leaves off of these plants. The more you take, seems to be the more they produce. Uh, and you can see, doing doing very well and again with this bed no sooner we took all the weeds out they sprang right back uh, this bed has been uncovered for uh, I think two years because the onions were in here last year and yeah when it's open ground like this gives the weeds and all the weed seeds plenty of time to get established and now this year that it's again uncovered they kind of take off and go crazy. But the beets that are in here look like they're doing quite well. Uh, I'm gonna have to go through here and weed everything again. So despite all the weeds, we should still get a good harvest of beets. This bed will definitely be covered next year. So probably gonna grow the broccoli and cauliflower in this bed. Uh, next year and then the pumpkin plant has definitely survived the uh, the frost damage he took uh, took quite a good hit from the uh, the late frost that we had so good to see that he survived and because all our spinach bolted we did end up clearing out this bed uh, there might still be a couple spinach plants 
in there. Who knows? Hard to tell with all the uh, with all the weeds. But we cleared the majority of them out, and uh, probably going to put another round of lettuce in this bed once we uh, turn it over. And I'm probably going to put some uh, some covering down because this weed these weeds are are just uncontrollable, and it's not a very it's not a very pleasant job. And lastly, the peas. Again, one solid mound of, uh, of peas. The sugar snap peas are always the first to flower and they are already producing pods. Lots of flowers out. So, it's good. Oregon Giants, uh, edible pod peas. Very large plants, uh, but they're always really late to uh, to flower. And the regular garden peas on this side doing quite well. One of our spaghetti squash plants that we have trained out of the garden and onto the grass doing very well. And the beans are starting to wind their way up the poles. Alright guys, that's about it for this week. Just to give you a little update on what we've taken so far out of the garden. Like I said, the asparagus bed is pretty much finished for, for the year. We've taken, how much here, seven pounds of asparagus out of that, uh, that one 10 foot by four foot bed. Keep in mind, a lot of those plants are still uh, still really young it's only about their second or third year of growth I started them from seed so it takes a little while for that root system to uh, to get well established uh, so hopefully in the coming years that will uh, that will increase but seven pounds still quite a bit of, uh, of asparagus the uh, lettuce we've taken seven heads of lettuce so far again it's only recently uh, become large enough so that we can uh, we can start harvesting the lettuce um, and again that should uh, that should increase now and last is the spinach which is all done we harvested just under five pounds of spinach uh, with the weather that we've had this year it really didn't last long uh, it bolted very very quickly again we've had frost in the middle of June surrounded by plus 30 degree weather and spinach is really not a fan of the uh, of the warm temperatures so while we normally harvest continuously for uh, probably about half the summer until it finally bolted it bolted really early this year so took it out and the final total on that is again just under five pounds uh, so that's it for now I'll see you next week